At this lab on the outskirts of Helsinki, scientists are working on what they hope is a revolution in food production. It all starts with a single microbe found in nature. Using electricity, hydrogen is extracted from water in the air. The microbe is then fed hydrogen, together with carbon dioxide from the air and nitrogen. It might sound futuristic, but the founders of Solar Foods says it begins with an age-old process, fermentation. That's a process actually surprisingly simple. So we have a fermenter, we have a microbe there, and it's trillions of friends. We don't add a microbe, but we provide conditions in this fermenter, basically full of water, uh, so that the organism can continue life, the same as human beings. But then the main energy source is hydrogen gas that we bubble in, uh, and carbon dioxide, it's kind of a soda stream uh, approach. And what happens is that these gases the organism use to build self, grow, multiply. We take the liquid out, dried, and you end up with a dried powder that is nutritionally somewhere between dried meat, dried soy, and dried carrots. The result is what the company calls Solene, a powder that is 65% protein. It says that the environmental footprint of Solene is just 1% that of meat protein and 10% that of plant-based protein. Scientists hope that this could be the answer to an agricultural system that has led to massive deforestation and contributes to a third of global carbon emissions. Because it does not need extensive land use, such methods could also be a good fit for cities like Singapore, which sees agri-food technology as an alternative way to achieve its goal of producing 30% of its nutritional needs by 2030. Several startups and research organizations in Singapore are already working on microbial proteins. These include experts at the Singapore Institute of Food and Biotechnology Innovation. We are working with another company to really looking at the scale-up production of the microbial protein biomass and we're converting them into meat-like structure and again using our knowledge of clinical nutrition to develop healthy food products. It's estimated that the global air-based foods market will be worth 100 million US dollars in the next decade. Besides being incorporated in foods, experts also believe air-based proteins can form a key component of animal and fish feed. Ultimately though, taste is king. So the, the taste is very neutral. There is taste, a bit of umami, uh, uh, like taste. Uh, some say mushroomy, some say uh, dried carrot. Solar Foods plans to supply Solene as a raw material to other companies so that they can develop and localize their preferred food products. It wants to become one of the first air-based protein companies to go commercial as early as next year. It has applied for regulatory approvals in the European Union, as well as in Singapore. But getting regulatory approval will be a long process, especially as the microbe used has to be declared food grade. Food grade means, means that whether they are uh, in a term called generally regarded as safe, so it's a grass grid. So, uh, uh, so the, the industry must make sure that the, these, these microbes fulfill these criteria. Then, then there's a, a lot easier for um, regulatory approval uh, because some of the microbes, they don't just produce things we want, they also produce at the same time things we don't want, like toxin and other ingredients that uh, we may not be aware of. And so if the microbial, the microbe that they are using are totally new, they will take a long, it's a, it's a long process to assess the risk, uh, food safety uh, risk. But the biggest challenge to mainstream acceptance remains cost. The challenges here is, is not cheap because the infrastructure set up needs money and then uh, it's a high tech to say to get the nutrient from the air. But that itself is not 
come, come free of charge because in order to make this carbon source for the micro to grow, you need electricity, which will cost money. And then you need to actually store this uh, 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 nutrient for the microbe. And then after that, as for all the fermentation processes, you need to dispose of the culture medium. And then you need to recover the, the microbial biomass and take the protein out of this uh, microbe. All this will cost money. So uh, idea is good, but in, in, in terms of uh, practicality, we need to look at the ways to cut costs. In Helsinki, the makers of air-based protein say that beyond the science, consumers also need to be able to connect with the food that they eat. Come to see the production, taste the products, buy a t-shirt and uh, decide yourself. Uh, and and uh, it's all there. And I believe uh, when you experience the taste and so on, uh, then it might not be that strange anymore.